Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm going to be reacting to Fred, Freddy, and Jason Cover 64 by Angry Yo Gamer. This was recommended to me by Josh9180 and Jared Tomlin. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, yeah, I've reacted to uh, the Freddy and the Jason games before, and they, of course, sucked. <laughs> and, uh, uh yeah um i'm guessing there's you know of course more freddy and jason games out there and i'm guessing uh james is gonna look more into them and uh yeah this was um last year's halloween special uh yeah and uh yeah let's check this out if you want to like comment subscribe my channel you can if you don't want to that's fine too here we go Happy Halloween from all of us here at Cinemassacre. It's that time of year, the best time of year, filled with ghouls and ghosts and pumpkins and parties and an all-new AVGN Halloween-themed episode. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you're not familiar with a virtual private network, think of it like this. Sending your data over the internet normally is like sending a postcard through the mail. Anyone can read it or copy it. But a VPN is like popping that same postcard in a secure, sealed envelope. Your data is sent through a secure tunnel to its destination. And ExpressVPN is the highest rated VPN out there. So my team and I have peace of mind knowing we're protected. Aside from that, you can watch movies that are geo-blocked in your country. I usually watch only spooky movies this month, but this time I'm feeling a little back to the future. Probably because Marty time traveled to October in the films. But guess what? The movie isn't on Netflix here in the USA. <gasps> Crazy, right? So I used ExpressVPN to change my location to Australia, and it loaded up instantly in the land down under. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre, or clicking the link in the description below. Now, on to the creepiest nerd episode of the year. You like to play shitty games? No. Damn, it's really been that long? How about that? It's been 15 years since wow. our very first Halloween special, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. And in all those years since, one of the more interesting things that have come along to celebrate those shitty games were the NECA figures. They're action figures, but not from the movies, the NES versions. Look at that. Jason's purple, <laughs> just like in the game, which further begs the question, why was he purple to begin with? What were they thinking? Might as well have Grimace in a hockey mask. <laughs> They even have the infamous death screen on there. You and your friends are dead. Game, Game over. over. Yeah. And Freddy, as you can see, is in the same obnoxious neon orange. Very scary. And it has the classic Freddy trademark, is dead. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, we have some games to look at. Did you know there existed a Freddy and Jason game on the Commodore 64? Yeah, if you thought the NES versions were bad, wait till you see these. But first, I want to show you some other horror games on the Commodore 64, like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. What? I can't believe a game like this existed. Let's uh, see if I can get it to load. Ah, uh, the floppy disk. I've waited all these years, locked in this hellhole with your stupid ass. <laughs> That nerd, he had forgotten about our shitty games. And being forgotten is a bitch. Nope. But now, when he remembers the fear that will give us power, that's our ticket back to the real world. And we'll make that nerd pay for what he's done to us. <laughs> well, Psycho is uh, pretty disappointing. Not because it's one of those keyboard command search-based games, which I suck at, but because it has very little to do with the movie. You're a detective in a stereotypical Sherlock Holmes outfit, I presume, searching the Bates Motel for stolen jewels. In the attic, you do encounter Norman and his dead mother, but that's about the extent of it. 
How about Ghostbusters? Remember how much the NES version sucked? Driving around, running out of gas, collecting money to buy equipment when it should have just been about zapping ghosts? Well, the Commodore 64 version takes it a step further. As soon as you start the game, you're assaulted with this boring wall of text. You have to buy the car? Shouldn't you just start with the Ecto-1? Which one is it? I'm no car expert, so I pick the first one, and I end up with Herbie the Love Bug. <laughs> well, fuck this shit. Yeah. So I tried a game called Slimer. Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Food! Food! Food's flying everywhere! Eat it! Eat it! Eat it! I don't even know if this game was officially based on Ghostbusters, or it just so happened to feature a green floating glob called Slimer. But at least it's somewhat of a game. Next up, Evil Dead. Yes, what? an Evil Dead game on Commodore 64. Um, you have to use a lot of imagination here. I think this is Ash, the Bruce Campbell character, or it's the top of a runaway sink. I don't know. <laughs> this is the cabin. There's the fireplace. And this thing, oh, it's uh, one of those swinging porch chairs. <laughs> wow. They tried. The object is to defeat all the deadites. You can pick up weapons, but when you attack, your arms are invisible. Am I hitting him, or is he hitting me? You can even close doors and windows to stop them from entering. And when you die, the screen bugs out. Well, that sucked. Groovy. <laughs> well, that exists. I guess let's try the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Come on, nerd! What? Play our games! Do it now! Well, it's Rocky Horror. It doesn't matter what I say about it, it's just the fact it exists. You take control of Brad or Janet, arriving at the castle, and meeting all the wild characters. If you're familiar with the cult film, you'll enjoy the fact that it has the time warp music. Yeah! That alone makes it worth it. To serve up another spooky treat, we have The, the Monsters, Monsters, based on the Monster sitcom. You might be wondering, what the plot of a Monsters game could possibly be? Well, it's based on the episode where Lily Munster is busy running around the house shooting glowing orbs at zombies and floating skull bats. That was a good one. But hey, it's playable, and the whole time I'm sitting here with a smile thinking, I'm playing the Munsters. It even has the music! That always counts for something. Were there any Gremlins games on Commodore? Well, take your pick. There's Gremlins the Adventure, which is one of those guess which word to type in kind of games. At least the graphics are cool, that they tried their best to depict scenes from the movie. The other Gremlins game I came across is action-based. You take control of Billy, I presume, hacking up Gremlins with his sword. Yeah, well, there is a sword in one scene of the film, but damn, maybe Billy should have kept that sword throughout the rest of the movie. Maybe then he wouldn't have been such a wuss. His mom, on the other hand, was badass. She killed almost every gremlin in that house. I think if you make a gremlins game, she should be the main character. But forget about the movie-based games. What you want is stuff like this. Soulless. You're some motherfucking monster going around in a goddamn dungeon, laying waste to inferior monsters. The backgrounds are surprisingly detailed, with horned demon heads and shit. This is metal. But the jumping kind of sucks. What can mm -hmm. you do? Next up is Chiller. At first, I thought it was going to be based on that ultra-gory crosshair shooter arcade, the one that got a tamed-down crappy port on NES. But this game is totally different. You're hopping around this garbled mess collecting tombstones. When you get them all, you advance to the next level, which is a movie theater, and on the screen is the level you were just playing. So you were just inside a movie. That is a video game twist I've never seen, back in the days of Commodore at least. Very innovative. But you haven't seen anything until you've seen Weird Dreams. You want yeah, that Chiller cover, the star of the game, looks like the, it looked like the Michael Jackson Thriller video. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't notice that. I don't know about this guy's weird dream. He was in some kind of machine. He jumped and then got transported to a carnival where a giant bee came and grabbed him by the crotch. By the crotch! <laughs> and then he woke up in some kind of hospital Whoa. with creepy people looking over him. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that is genuinely scary. Ugh. I wish I could get more of this game to work, but it keeps on glitching. Mm. Well, let's move on to the big one. Friday the 13th, the computer game. It says on the back of the box, 
Before playing the game, make sure that you close and lock all doors, windows, and curtains. Turn off all lights. Use a candle if necessary. Make sure Granny isn't in the room. And set the computer volume at maximum. Well, that's a bit of extra work. But hey, it'll help me kill some time while the game loads. Why is there always lightning in my room? Anyway, I'll be right back. <gasps> Jason got out. <laughs> You're free, Jason! But don't kill him yet. Wait for me. All right, I'm all set. I did everything the, the box said. I just gotta turn the volume up here. Or not. <laughs> well, they certainly put a lot of effort into creating a whole cast of characters who you'll never care about. They even went through the trouble of giving each of them bios. And as far as I remember, none of them were from the movies. In the manual, it even has photos, like some kind of yearbook. Who are these people? The game designers, maybe? Daryl Peters, called Dip by his friends. Daryl doesn't take life seriously and just wants to laugh. <laughs> as you can see, the graphics are nothing much to applaud or complain about. The floors are gray, the ground is gray, everything is just as bland as ever, but at least there's a lot to explore. Yeah, Camp Crystal Lake has cemeteries, barns, churches, pretty much everything except a lake. Whoa, what? <sighs> <sighs> well, that was random and scary. The goal is to stop Jason from killing all the camp counselors, which he can do off screen. And each time one of them's killed, they change to a gravestone. So you're supposed to lure the counselors away from Jason. If you grab a cross and put it in a room, that room becomes the sanctuary. So if you lead the counselors there, they're safe. What kind of sense does that make? Jason's scared of a cross now? Like Dracula? No, Jason would see that cross and all he'd think is it's something else he could use to stab people with. I can't wait to be stabbing you, nerd! Hurry up and play my game! But this game does not lack weapons. This campground has axes, pitchforks, and spears just laying all over the place. You can pick one up at a time. I don't know if it even matters which one you pick. I'd pick the shovel, not the pick, because the shovel's my pick. You don't want to pick the pick because the pick is a pick and the shovel isn't a pick. If you pick the pick, the pick, the shovel isn't a pick. Now you've got it! So I have a weapon. I still haven't seen Jason anywhere. So, I got restless, and I start killing random people. That is the most high-pitched, blood-curdling scream I have ever heard in a game. That'll perk your pets up, wake your neighbors. If you turn that up loud, it'll destroy your senses. But damn, let's hear that again. Yeah, again. Oh my god, it's like, ah! Oh man, that is amazing! That is the best scream of any game ever! I'm gonna make you scream! It's addicting. It's like your reward for murdering. Anytime you do it, you get to hear that hilarious shriek. I also love how the bodies stay on the ground. And if you return to the site, the game remembers to keep the body there. Wow, I think I found the true goal of this game. Kill all the counselors before Jason does. Challenge his body count. See who's the real slasher king of Camp Crystal Lake. Where is Jason anyway? You're not gonna believe this. Is Jason purple or pink, polka dotted? No, no, it's nothing like that. It's nothing you could even make up. Check this out. Okay. Jason is dead. Did you miss it? What? I killed Jason. Look again. That is Jason. All along, he's been disguised as one of the counselors. Oh, dude. How do I handle this one? This it's begs so, dumb. so many questions. First of all, how is that supposed to be Jason? He looks just like a normal guy. Oh, but he's wearing black clothing, so that makes him Jason. Where's the hockey mask? Even the back of the box mentions the mask, and it's on the damn cover. But why isn't he wearing it? 
I guess because he couldn't fit it under his rubber face disguise. And why is his real face so normal? You ever seen what Jason's real face looks like in the movies? Yeah. It's quite distinct. How does Jason disguise himself? Especially when it's a girl. Does he put on a wig and a bathing suit? <laughs> oh, that would have been a great scene. Maybe it's based on the first movie when Jason wasn't the killer. Or maybe it's not Jason Voorhees. It's some other guy that just happened to be named Jason. Or maybe the game is just called Fry the 13th, but it's unrelated. Kind of like that TV show that nobody cared about. Or maybe, just maybe, the game fucking sucks. Yeah. The funniest thing about this is that the best strategy to find out which of the counselors is Jason is to kill first and ask questions later. And it works! Just kill everyone in sight. Sooner or later, you'll get them. The game rewards you for such an extreme rash decision. Now, that should be a movie plot. The counselor kills everyone on the assumption they could be Jason and thus becomes an even worse killer than Jason. What a twist. This is the least accurate movie-to-game adaptation I have ever seen. This couldn't yeah. be any less faithful to the films if the soundtrack had Old MacDonald had a farm. Let me tell you something. Maybe you laughed at that comment about the soundtrack having Old MacDonald had a farm, or maybe uh, you only got a minor chuckle out of it, or maybe you felt um, indifferent about it. But one thing's for sure... You're certain that I'm joking. That would be a very rational way of thinking. But the strange thing is, I'm not joking. I am dead fucking serious. What I have heard with my own ears is a Friday the 13th game that has old McDonald at a fucking farm. <laughs> wow. Jason Voorhees had a farm <laughs> And on that farm he killed a guy <laughs> With a uh, uh, here and a here and a here and a here and a ah, here and a ah. Jason Voorhees had a farm <laughs> Are you gonna sing old McDonald? Or are you gonna play my game, bitch? <laughs> now that's the perfect score to go along with people getting murdered over assumptions that they're an immortal serial killer. That should have been in the movies. <laughs> Old MacDonald is one of several unlikely songs to be featured in this game. Mm -hmm. There's the Wedding March, for example. But things get weirder. Check out the manual. Variety is the word here. Friday the 13th, the computer game, has snatches of music familiar to everyone. Try to name them all. So it's a name that tune game? On top of being a slasher villain game? I'm genuinely perplexed. In that way, you could put whatever random bullshit you want in anything. <laughs> That'd be like if I scattered random lol dolls all over the episode for no reason, just to be completely random, uh, just to say later, hey, did you catch all five? And yeah, I call them lol dolls. Lol dolls. <laughs> Whoa, what the? Wow. That is a bleeding severed head with a machete planted in it, in a 1986 video game. That is absolutely stunning. Okay, this game rules, and the manual is a gold mine. The two blood capsules included free with this package are non-toxic and contain red sugar which forms simulated blood when placed in the mouth. This game included blood capsules? Where are they? Where are- oh, oh, I guess somebody already used them back in 86. Man. This game keeps getting more and more interesting. You're not gonna need blood capsules when I get there. <laughs> How long is this review gonna be? Win a color monitor? All you have to do to win your Eureka monitor is to listen to the 10 sound effects recorded on your Friday the 13th tape after the computer game? There's audio on this cassette? Dude. Friday, 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 Friday,
Write the number of each sound in the box opposite the most appropriate description. Finally, imagine what it would be like to own your own software house and decide what name you would give it. Five entrants with the most dynamic and descriptive names will receive the prizes. Shithouse Productions. Anyway, I spent way too much time here, so let's move on to Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. yes! Now you're playing with power! You start this thing up, and right away, you got the cast of characters. Actual characters from Part 3. So, cool. this game is based on the Dream Warriors, sort of like the NES version. You start off from a bird's eye view as this little tiny white figure. I feel like I've seen the same pixelated character in other old video games. I bet if you had 20 of these little guys, it could be an old football game or something. The goal here is that you're looking for Freddy's house, just to see if he's home, I guess. And he happens to live in one of the most confusing housing developments. Probably has courts and lanes and unit A1, B2. Oh, Freddy's ready already. He's rock steady when he's in the Serengeti. He's chopping off your heady with machete. <laughs> he's massive. If I was You're walking down. around the neighborhood and this giant dude comes at me, I'd be like, I'm done. Just get me. So I find Freddy's house, and it just looks like any other ordinary house on the block. Then I get a message saying that I've done well, but I now must seek my friends. You'd never know it, but looking at the manual, it's supposed to be Amanda Kruger, Freddy's mom, talking to you. Now, all of a sudden, your character starts to look more like a fleshed-out human being. The interior of Freddy's house is a maze of purple walls, and level three is like you're walking around giant slabs of green jello. All throughout the game, you encounter stock enemies like skeletons and ghosts. Yep, we're in another edition of Boo Haunted House. <laughs> There's hardly any sound in this game. You do get to hear the Freddy music at the start of each level. But during the gameplay, it's dead silent, except for a few sound effects here and there. It even tells you what it is you're supposed to be hearing. You hear Kristen screaming in agony in the distance? Jeez, you couldn't actually have a scream? Like in Friday the 13th? You collect weapons and items because, hey, isn't that what all video games were about? You run around picking up junk? Yeah, that's what the 80s were all about. As kids, we were always carrying around a baseball bat, a magnet, some keys, holy water, magic dagger, you know? Somewhere you can get a gun, but what would a gun do against an immortal, soul-stealing killer who invades your dreams? Well, I think we're in the dream already, so maybe it's a dream gun. Hmm. When you collect ammo, it says bullets taken. The terminology just doesn't seem right. Saying I took a bullet carries a much more serious implication. That'd be like if you were on a plane and the pilot said, we're going down, but he meant to say, we're making our descent. You can even get coffee cups. And as the game says, the coffee restores your soul. That's how I feel about coffee. We need a shirt of that. I bet you've seen all these coffee shirts that are out there. Some are mildly amusing, while others are straight up stupid. But they all share one thing. They express a love of coffee. Well, how about one from the Commodore 64 Nightmare on Elm Street that says, Use coffee to restore your soul. Oh, I would so buy Some that Some parts shirt. you have to pull a lever, but you'll barely notice it amongst all these cracks in the wall. All right, get kill the ghost. Oh, wait, what just happened? A fatal error. disc error has occurred. Well, there's not much else to see in this game, but the manual has a tech support number. I think I'll call it... Street Tech Support, what's your issue? I'm having a problem with my Commodore freezing up. Okay, I'm happy to help. I just need a little more information. Do you want a slow death or eternal life in hell? Ha <laughs> ha! Jesus Christ, that <laughs> got me. Time to experience a fatal error, nerd! Oh. <sighs> oh. I'm gonna chop you to kilobits! 
Free you bastard! Yeah. No. No. Honestly, I was kind of hoping that they would be life size, you know. But then again, he did defeat them in the previous episodes of Friday Thirteenth and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, dude, they're just dolls. Like, dude, you could just like grab them, throw it out the door. Like, come on, man. <laughs> and yeah, like, oh, those games suck. And then that Friday the 13th one, it's like, man, they couldn't make the killer look like Jason. Like, it's just some dude in black. Like, <sighs> and for some reason they used Old McDonald Have Farm in the, in the wedding music. Uh-huh. What? Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to Friday. No, anyway, Friday and Jason on Commodore 64 by Angry Beyond Game Nerd. And uh, yeah, everyone take care of yourselves and see you in the next one. Bye.